2000, Wakefield, Massachusetts. Software tester Michael McDermott is on a rampage. Known to co-workers as Mucko, McDermott guns down colleagues with a semi-automatic rifle, killing seven. When the SWAT team arrives, McDermott tells them, I don't speak German. Once incarcerated, he shares his cryptic delusion. He says he is in purgatory and that his victims are not co-workers. Rather, they are six Nazi soldiers and Hitler. He claims that an archangel told him that by killing Nazis, he can earn a soul. What drives a man to embrace such a perplexing delusion? The belief that you are dead or in purgatory is known as Cotard syndrome, an extremely rare condition often associated with schizophrenia. Those who suffer from it truly believe that their bodies have been taken over and cannot be rationally convinced otherwise. A close examination of his past, however, reveals serious questions about the nature of his delusion. 1970, Marshfield, Massachusetts. The son of two school teachers, Michael McDermott is a bright, inquisitive child. A budding mechanic, he loves fixing things. McDermott has an active imagination and spends hours absorbed in fantasy books and games. But there is something lurking inside him. He later claims that he believes he was born without a soul. As an adult, McDermott works a series of technology-related jobs. He begins to suffer from depression. Isolating himself, McDermott retreats to his interior fantasy world. Spiraling further into depression, McDermott attempts suicide by overdosing on anxiety medication. He is briefly hospitalized. Depression can have a devastating impact. It clouds judgment and at times creates a powerful and overwhelming sense of despair. In the case of Michael McDermott, depression is an oppressive reality that he cannot escape. McDermott finds comfort in his family. He adores his nieces and nephews. They give him a nickname, Mucko. He embraces the name and even asks co-workers to use it. However, his problems mount. In 1990, a brief marriage ends in divorce, and he begins to experience financial difficulties. McDermott owes thousands of dollars in back taxes to the IRS. His employer docks his wages to repay the debt, despite his angry objections. Co-workers make note of ominous behavior. McDermott makes out a will and asks them to sign it as witnesses. Then, he snaps. Using weapons stashed under his desk, McDermott embarks on a massacre, killing seven co-workers. In court, McDermott claims he perceived his victims to be Nazis and killed them to escape purgatory. The last Nazi was there. I shot and killed him. And Hitler was there. I shot and killed him. My mission was complete. I knew at this point I had a soul. As the trial unfolds, prosecutors reveal crucial evidence. McDermott extensively researched how to fake mental illness. And many of his victims were involved in the wage dispute. The jury finds McDermott guilty of seven counts of murder, and he is sentenced to seven life terms in prison. All indications points to the fact Michael McDermott is faking Cotard syndrome. He does display the traditional progression of symptoms associated with the disease. A closer examination reveals McDermott to be a disturbed but angry man driven by revenge. By pretending to suffer from a delusional disorder, he uses a conjured up mental illness as a shield, an extenuating circumstance. In this way, he denies 
the victims and their families closure. I place him at level 15, multiple vicious acts.